Hi, and thanks for joining me. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a few very important tips that you'll wanna know if you're a new user to Google Classroom, or if this is your first time to teach with Google Classroom online. Now, if you're in your Google Classroom account, go ahead and open up one of your classes. And the first thing we're gonna talk about that you'll need to know is the settings icon. If you go to the top right and click on the gear, you'll notice that you can access your class details that you entered whenever you set up your class originally. But if you scroll down to the general section, one of the things here is the stream. Now the settings here are important because depending on how you set these up, students will either have the ability to freely post anything that they want on the main screen or in a comment, or you can limit access by changing it here. So if you click the drop down menu, you'll notice that you can move from students can post and comment to students can only comment. This means that they won't be able to post to the stream, but they can still ask questions in the comment section on your assignments. The other option is only teachers can post or comment. If you do this, students will not be able to post in the stream, nor will they be able to comment on assignments. But the thing that you need to remember is if you set it to this, then students will not be able to answer questions in the ask a question assignment type. So if you want them to be able to use the ask a question assignment type, change your setting to students can only comment and it will allow them. The other thing that you're gonna see here is guardian summaries. If you turn this feature on, that means that you can enter email addresses for your student's parent or guardian. And then on a regular basis, parents will receive a guardian summary, like the example that I'm showing you here on the support page. I have this set up for my kids and each week I get an email like this one showing the work that they had missing from last week, whatever is due next week, and then class activity that's going on in each of the classes for my student. Now the key thing to remember is this works best if you are using due dates on Google Classroom. So make sure that when you enter your assignments, you're adding due dates to them. The other feature I want to show you is something that's changed recently in classwork. When you go to the Classwork tab, you'll notice at the top that the Create button looks the same. And so if you're familiar with Google Classroom already, that much is still the same. But if you click it and click on Assignment, you're going to notice that some of the setup has changed and it's actually changed for the better. But just a quick rundown of the assignment types that you have here. Assignment allows you to create an assignment that you can add attachments and a due date and a topic to. Quiz assignment does the same as assignment, but it also automatically creates a Google form that you can use as a quiz. Question allows you to create an assignment that is more of a discussion type assignment so that you can ask a question, either multiple choice or short answer, and students can respond. Material allows you to attach materials to your classroom, such as a syllabus or any video content that you might have for your classroom. And then reuse post allows you to do exactly that. Take a post that you've used previously and copy it or duplicate it and use it again. This works best if you're duplicating assignments from another section or another class that you're teaching. Finally, down at the bottom you have topic and it's best if you're entering assignments that you add a topic to them so that students can filter your stream and keep their classwork from one unit or one chapter or one week to the next straight. So let's go ahead and click Create Assignment. And you'll notice that the interface has changed a little bit, so you'll need to enter a title for your assignment. And then you can add some instructions, but this is optional, you don't actually have to. So here I've added an instruction for the week saying that we're gonna take a look at cell biology, and there's gonna be an introductory video, and then they have a collaborative doc that they can complete uh, when they finish the video. So to add those items, I can click Add, and here you have the option of adding items from your Google Drive, any link from the web, an attachment from your computer, or a video from YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and click YouTube, and I can search for a video if I don't already have one. So I'm gonna look up cellular biology, do a quick search, and find the video that I want. And so let's say, for instance, this is the video that I want, parts of a cell, and I'll click Add. Now I also told the students that I had a Google Doc that I wanted them to complete, so if I click Add again, 
I can add that attachment because it's already saved in my Google Drive. Now the great thing about this is you don't have to worry about the sharing settings on that document because Google Classroom is going to take care of those sharing settings for you. So I'll take a quick search in my Google Drive to find that document. I'll go ahead and click on the document and click add and it's added to my assignment. Now one thing to remember, there's a couple of settings that you want to change here if depending on if you're going to use this file for view only access or edit access or if you need to make a copy for each student. You must make this change here when you're creating the assignment otherwise you can't change it later. So here students can view file means that they can only look at it. Students can edit file means that if I have 30 students in my classroom they'll all be able to edit this one document and I don't want that necessarily unless it was a collaborative document. But in this case I want each of them to have their own copy. So I'll click make a copy for each student and they'll each get a copy of this learning unit hyperdoc and then it will put their name on it. Also next to the add button you have the create button. So if you're planning an assignment and you haven't yet created the instruction document or the assignment document you can click create and you can add a doc sheet slide form or a drawing from here if you'd like on the right hand side you have options to add this assignment to other classes if you'd like likewise in addition to adding this to multiple classes you can choose on the all students drop down menu to either assign it to all students or if you need to differentiate learning for each of your students you can uncheck all students and then you can check only those that will receive this version of this assignment. On the points menu when you click the drop down you have the choice of making this an ungraded assignment or you can change the point value just by entering any number that you'd like. Below that on due date if you set a due date remember parent and guardian summaries will include information about assignments that are overdue or coming due. And then on topic, like I said earlier, it's very important that you use topics because it helps students to streamline the Google Stream in Classroom so that they can filter down to just what's going on for one unit or one week that you're covering in class. So when you create a topic, you have free reign to call it anything that you'd like. You can call it Unit 1 or you can call it uh, Week 1. Or if you want to, you could just call it Week of March 30th. Then finally you have the option of adding a rubric to an assignment. So if you want students to know ahead of time how they'll be scored and what criterion that you're going to use, you can click on add rubric and you can either create one from scratch or if you've created one previously you can reuse a rubric. If you want to learn more about this option, use the link that's shown at the screen at the bottom. And then you can also import rubrics from Sheets. You also have the option of checking originality reports. Originality reports allow you to compare student work to other works on the web to ensure that students aren't plagiarizing. Finally, when you're finished, you can either click assign and it will go out to the students immediately, or if this is something that you want to show up at a later date, you can click the drop down and you can schedule this assignment to show up at a specified time. You also have the option of choosing save draft and you can come back to it later. When you click assign, It'll automatically show up in the classwork stream and your students are ready to go. Well, hopefully this has kind of taken some of the mystery out of assigning assignments for new users, or hopefully it's giving you some new information for veteran users that may not know about these features. If you'd like more information, visit my website at www.techiecoach.com and we'll see you next time.